Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate all of your support. So let's get started. My first project is a little box that I found at the thrift shop and it was actually a dark blue. So I painted it with Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I may have even had to put three coats of paint on it because the blue was a really dark blue. Next, I'm using Tim Holtz collage paper, and the name of it is Aviary. I think I bought it on Amazon. And it comes in a little roll in a little tube, and it has a repeating pattern on the paper. And I think the repeating pat pattern may be 10 to 12 inches long. And it's got all the things that I love, birds, script, a little bit of greenery on it. And I put it on with liquid patina, and I'm using a little piece of saran wrap to push out the wrinkles. Next, I'm using the IOD stamp set called Birds and Bees, and I stamped with Black Stays on Ink two of the same bird on just an extra piece of napkin that was some of the napkin that you tear off when you use napkins, and I'm just also adding that with liquid patina, and I'm putting the same bird stamp on both sides of it, and I'm pushing it down with that saran wrap to get the wrinkles out. And here it is. Isn't it so pretty? I really like it. Now, this is my favorite piece of today's video. I had a piece of plywood out in the garage, and I think it was about half inch to a quarter inch thick. I had my husband to cut it a specific size, and it was about four inches longer than the actual transfer. And I painted that piece white. Then I had some really thin wood, and it was kind of like the consistency of plywood, but it didn't have the grooves on it. And I cut that um, to fit exactly what the transfer was. So my goal was to have two inches on either side of that transfer on that white board because I'm gonna be putting molds on it. Now this is a really large transfer, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me a pretty good while to get it on. And I painted that top piece with Dixie Belle Haint Blue. And I sealed it actually two times because this transfer is so large that I didn't want any of it to pull up at all. And look how pretty it is. It's just so beautiful. And so I'm just using that little piece of plastic that you pull off. And I'm just kind of burnishing the whole transfer and then I'm gonna seal it again. Now I'm using the new IOD um, mold called Dainty Flourishes. Now I'm using the DOS air dry clay, and I put a lot of these all along each side of that transfer on the white, and I put um, two of them on up at the top and on the bottom, and then I actually put two like medallions right in the center up at the top and the bottom and the medallions came from the iod mold called classic elements but now the top one it kind of hangs off a little bit so what i did was i used hot wax or hot glue gun um, to make that one because it's going to be hanging off so i used some tight bond glue to glue all of it down it took me a pretty long while to make all of those air dry clay molds. And I painted it white, and then I let it sit for a couple days because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And I talked to my mom, and I sent her a picture, and I put gold gilding wax all over those molds. Look at that. I'm not selling this. This is mine. I just think it is so beautiful, and it's really large. Now, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, how about subscribing to my channel? Now, this next project is just a little journal that I ordered actually several of them on Amazon. I don't think the cover is actually leather, but it kind of looks like it. And all I'm doing is I'm just painting it with Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. Now, you see where I've got that parchment paper kind of hanging out? What I did was I opened up the, the journal and put that right on the inside, and I pushed it all the way to the edge so that that paint wouldn't get over on the pages. 
and this is just a little wood um, window and I took a napkin and I decoupaged that on the back of it and this is some of the flowers from the rest of the napkin and I'm just decoupaging those on it as well and then I'm gonna seal it with a clear coat now you might not have ever done these before but think about this this would make great Christmas gifts or even for somebody in your Bible study group but isn't that so pretty now the next piece is just a little birdhouse and I actually think I bought it at Hobby Lobby because they were on sale so I painted it all white, and this is a napkin that I saw Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage use the other day on her video, and even before the video was over, I stopped, went to Amazon, and ordered it because I wanted some as well because I just thought it was so, so pretty, and it has all these different flowers on it. So I'll try to link that below in the description box, but it's so pretty, and I'm just decoupaging different nap um, flowers all over it, and now, one of the things that you might be able to see a little bit, but up at the top on the roof, it's got a little hole on it, a hole in it, because that was the little hanger in it. Well, this is Tuesday when I'm actually editing this video. And this morning, I watched Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse, and she did something like this. And what I did was I just put some air dry clay in that little um, hole. But one of the things she did was she used a little IOD mold and I think she made it with um, resin, and she kind of tucked that inside of that hole. Um, I didn't do that, but that's a great idea. And so I'm just decoupaging the napkin all over it, and then there's like a little flag that kind of sticks up on one side like a mailbox on the other side. So I put some little flowers on that too. And it's just a little shelf sitter, but think about it. If you find some little birdhouses at the thrift shop, pick them up, paint them white, because you can use all kind of napkins. You can, you can even find Christmas napkins that would be beautiful for this. And birdhouses are just something little that you can add to a vignette, or you can make a whole vignette just with all bird pieces, which is kind of what you're seeing today. But I really, really like this napkin, and it's so pretty, and the colors in it are just beautiful. And I also thought about, um, you, maybe I should have put a script stamp on it as well. And that's what it looks like. Okay, my next project is a tote, a wood tote that I found at the thrift shop. And it was kind of a pale pink, and it's actually kind of slick. It's not made out of wood. I'm not really sure what it's made out of. It's not MDF board, but it's kind of plasticky feeling. So I painted it white, and then I added... Dixie Bell slick stick and let that sit on it because I knew that if that paint would peel off later on if I didn't put something on it to seal it. Now this transfer is from Redesign with Prima and it's called Postal Birds and it's a really large transfer but it has all these pretty birds on it. So I painted it white. I made sure I sealed it real good, even though I had that slick stick on it. I want Before you put a transfer down, you need to make sure you seal it so that if just in case that sealer's not real dry too, you don't want to, you know, pull it up and pull that paint off with the transfer. Trust me, I may have done that in the past. So I'm just using two different birds. I'm putting one bird on one side and I'm using some script and then I put on a bird on the other side and then I actually make a hang tag to hang on the side with the little bird. And then I just put a little bit of script here and a little bit of script there. And then I'm using that plastic piece to kind of burnish it down. But it's really pretty. But now think about it, look at that bird. It's got fall colors in it. So this is not only something you could use in the spring or the summer, but how pretty would this be in the fall or you know even as around thanksgiving this would be so pretty with just some little pumpkins in, in it you know stuck inside maybe even some little burlap pumpkins in it but it's just a pretty little tote bag I'm, I'm sorry a tote box that you could just use for anything and this is such a nice transfer set but isn't that so pretty and there's my little hang tag okay my next project is a block of wood and I took a old piece of a song from a church hymnal and I decoupaged it on 
and then I used the IOD Alpha Belly stamp. And I wanted to make it kind of extra pretty, so I stamped that on the um, outside of the block, on the, on the edges, to kind of make it look like a frame. And I loved it. I loved the way it turned out. It just kind of added just a little bit of extra to it. And then I used two little birds and the heart from the new IOD mold called Primitive. And I just painted those white and I put some antiquing on it. Now, my next piece is a little complicated. I took a wood tag, and I have several of those that I ordered from Amazon. And this is that same IOD mold, and it's called Primitive. And I want you to think about um, if you've ever seen those samplers that people used to cross stitch a long time ago, and it had um, like little, little people on it that looked, um, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it was just real primitive kind of art. And so what I did was um, I just used my hot glue gun, and I used two. And if you watched my last video, remember, um, if you're going to use hot glue in a mold, you don't have to use cornstarch in it. But the glue needs to be at least 100 degrees temperature so it that will flow out smoothly. And I'm not really sure which pieces I'm going to use, so I just go on and make molds for all of them because hot glue is so cheap to use. And I usually buy a big box of it from Amazon, um, so I don't have to keep going back to the store. And when you use um, a hot glue gun in the molds, it's not going to melt it. And though, so I just go ahead and pick out all the pieces. And then I go to Pinterest, and I pull up primitive folk art DIYs. And I just looked at some of the different pieces that people had done before. And what I really like about it is you can put these pieces in any sort of order and they look like they all went together. And so I just went on and got all those made and put them out. And then I just kind of played with it a little bit. And then I used um, different paints to paint them. And the colors are a little bit brighter. And so you'll see in just a minute. And then I antiqued it just to make it look just a little bit older than that. So let me tell you about the different pieces that I put on it. So I used the sunflower mold, and I used Waverly Maze chalk paint, which is a yellow, and I used um, Waverly truffle to fill on the inside of the sunflower. The different greenery pieces that I put on was from Waverly um, chalk paint in the color moss. I also put a little tulip, and I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ocean, which is a blue. And then I used one little heart and two little flowers, and I used Dixie Belle Barn Red paint. So it looks a little bright when you first put it on. Oh, and the two little birds, I just used Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk paint on those. So I got all the different pieces um, painted before I glued them on, and I actually used the hot glue gun to glue them on. Um, sometimes you could use tight bond glue to add these pieces, but because some of the pieces were going to be hanging off, then um, and because it was going to be attached to wood, um, and because sometimes when you use hot glue, the back side of it can kind of be not really smooth, um, so it helps to use hot glue to attach it to whatever you're going to put it on. So I went on and glued all the different pieces because there's so many pieces to this little tag. And then once I got them all glued on, then I went back and I antiqued it with Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. And I really like the way it turned out. And you'll be able to see it, all the pieces, how I put them out. Isn't that so pretty? I just really like it. I like how all the pieces just kind of look like something you would see in an old cross stitch pattern. But if you like this mold, just go to Pinterest and look at all the different DIYs that people have used before for primitive folk art um, designs, and you can come up with all kind of pieces. And you don't even have to use it like this. Um, you can just add, you know, mat it wherever you want, and it just ends up looking so pretty. 
Now, those little pieces of that leaf that's hanging off, that little stem, I go back and I paint the back side of that. Um, because this is just something that you might kind of set up on the bookshelf or you might have it hanging from something. And if it was to twist around, I wouldn't want somebody to see the back side of that greenery hanging off and it not be painted. And then I also painted the back of that wood tag because I'm not really sure. Um, I'll probably sell this, but I kind of like it a lot. And I like the colors. These would be perfect fall colors. Now, there's also an IOD stamp set that has a lot of the same things on it and I tried stamping like a little wood round for that and I used some watercolors to paint it and it's not in the video for obvious reasons it did not turn out at all like I wanted it to so I'm going to play with that stamp set just a little bit more before I put that in a video but what do you think all right friends we are coming to the close of this video today I have packed a lot of different bird projects in this one video. So look at all of it. I went really fast and furious, um, and I really like all the different pieces that I put. Um, leave me a comment. Tell me which one was your favorite. And also, think about it. These journals will make wonderful Christmas gifts. Or, think you know, schools can be starting back soon. And how nice it would be for you to go ahead and make a journal for your child's teacher as they begin the year. Um, I know that teachers always look forward to those kind of special things that the students give them. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, my goodness. I don't really know where I'm going to put it in the house. But um, when I think also about the price of the transfer and how much I put into that, even though the wood was free, um, it, there was a lot of work that was put into that large piece. Um, and if I put it in my booth, honestly, I don't think I would be able to get the money for it that I should. So tell me, what is your favorite piece today? I'm so excited, and I've got a video coming out Saturday. I can't wait, and it's got a tote box in it, and I can't wait to show you how I fixed it. It's you know how me you know how I am. I like to do a lot of different things with one particular piece. So, what was your favorite? And um, have you used any of these products at this point, especially with this new IOD primitive mold? Guys, thank you so much for all your sweet comments and all your support. I just, I, I can't thank you enough. So once again, if you um, like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that now. But thanks so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week.